Hello, I am pleased to see everyone today. I hope you are all doing well. The channel hit a milestone. I got to 1200 subscribers, which is fantastic. I'm super excited and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. Um, or at least I hope you are. And if you are, please boop the like button. Boop, boop it. And that will help me with the algorithms, the stupid algorithms. But please do that. Today I have uh, the Lay of Cracky um, for you guys. I haven't seen it read anywhere really, and so this is a special thing. It's going to be. Um, it looks like half translated by the writer of the article, and then the other half is an older translation. But we're just going to read through um, what he has to say about it, and then his translation, and then the older part. So I will go ahead and get started. Thank you again for joining me. And boop the like button, please. Please. The Lay of Kraki. The Norse poem Krakamal is written as a monologue by the legendary Viking king Ragnar Lothbrok. Told as Ragnar lies dying down in the Anglo-Saxon King Ela's snake pit, he recounts heroic events from his life. Neither the original poet nor where it was first written is known today. However, it is preserved in several ancient manuscripts from the 13th and 17th century. They were themselves likely written copies of older manuscripts. The common consensus is that the Krakamal was first written in the 12th century. This is based partly on events in the content, as well as some of the spelling, which scholars can track due to slight changes over time. Even more fascinating, I think, is the possible meaning of the name Kraku, could be translated as crow, and then the name would be Tale of the Crow. This would make sense to many today. Since the name of Ragnar's wife, Oslag, was Crow, or Kraku. However, that nickname was not really known at the time when this poem was first written. There's a good chance the name meant something else then. The Tale of Slaughter from the Hebrides. There are a few words in the poem which are spelled in a way common to the Norse settlements on the Scottish islands of the Hebrides around the 11th and 12th century. Before the time of the Vikings' arrival to the outer Scottish islands of the Orkneys and Hebrides, the islands were inhabited by the Celts. In Celtic mythology, there is a war goddess named Barab, associated with death, war, and violence. Her symbol, or animal, seen as representing her was the crow. Just like ravens turning up at the battlefield were, were seen as Odin, the Celts saw crows as representing Barab. In this context, the name Krakumal can be understood as tales of slaughter. This is quite fitting since most of what Ragnar shares in the Krakumal is either about past exploits or the bloody revenge he expects his sons will visit upon King Ela. The popularity of Ragnar Lothbrok. The Krakumal is far from the only ancient text about the legendary King Ragnar and his sons. There has been a lot of discussion about whether or not Ragnar was a real person. I believe it must be quite clear that he was. Preceding the Krakamal in two different manuscripts is the saga, saga of Ragnar Lothbrok. And then there is the tale of Ragnar's sons, which is another saga from the same universe about Ragnar and his sons found in other manuscripts. When you add it, when you add to it that he is mentioned in several other sagas and there is even a rune stone mentioning the sons of Lothrok, it all points to him being no, a known person a long time ago. Some of the mysticism surrounding him might be 
that so much is indeed shrouded in the fog of time. There are several legendary Viking kings we know well through historical records, like Harald Hadrada, king of Norway, who at one point led the Varangian Guard and later died in the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Eric the Red is another Viking warrior legend, father of Leif Erikson, famous for discovering America. However, they came at a slightly later stage where their exploits were recorded for posterity in a better way. I believe we will never truly know just what is true and what is myth in the history of Ragnar Lothbrok. That is part of what makes it such a great tale, I think. The Krakamal only adds to this. Translating Krakamal. The Lay of Kraka will eventually be all my own translation. However, I have just started and rather than wait until I am finished, I am publishing it as a mix of my own translation and otherwise using an old public domain version of the poem. If you ever read different translations of Old Norse poems or sagas, you will find that there are slight differences. Typically, the Old Norse originals are far fewer words, and when translating them, you have to interpret the idea or full meaning of a few words. While this style is prevalent in Old Norse, it might also point to an audience who would know more of the context by heart. Having said that, I do try to stay true to both the meaning and also follow the same structure as far as it's feasible and somewhat natural. If you come across phrases or sentence structures that seem off, this is likely the explanation. Krakama, the lay of Kraka. We struck with our sword. It was not long ago. We to Gotland went to slay the burrowing wolf. Then we married Thora, even after among men, having stabbed the heather fish, Lothbrok would be my name. I stabbed the earth loop with the shining steel blade. We struck our sword. I was rather young when I carved east in Erasundi lunch for the greedy wolves and yellow-footed bird. There, where it sang, riveted helmets struck by hard iron, a great meal, all the seas swelled, raven waded in blood of the stain, slain. We struck with our sword, high we carried our spear, when we were twenty years old, reddening the sword widely, killing eight earls, east of the mouth of Divina, the greedy one we fed plenty of food in that battle. Blood fell into the swelling sea, taking troops' lives. We struck with our sword. Hathen's woman was near when we sent Halsinglen's people to the halls of Odin. Proceeding up the Ifa River, swords succeeded in biting. All was waves of wounds, the river turning a hot red. Soaring swords on chain mail and wound headings, cleaving shields. Older translation of Krakamal starts here. We struck with our swords, none fled away before Herod fell on his steed of the sea. No bolder Jarl in the days to come will cleave the waves with his long warships. Stout-hearted ever in battle was he. We struck with our swords. Men cast down their shields when by our arrows their breasts were rent. Our swords bit hard by Scarpa Skeri. In red were all shields ere Raffin fell. On the burnies ran sweat with hot gore bent. We struck with our swords, high screamed the blades, before King Eastein was felled in the fray. The sword struck home on helmet and shield. From our wounds sprang forth the warm wet blood. Our foes were left for the birds of prey. We struck with our swords. 
At Inderis Isles, the ravens received rich flesh to tear. The steeds of the witches were battened full. The arrows flew up with the rising sun. The steel resounded on helmets there. We struck with our swords before borne home. The ravens were pastured, our shields were red. Rain beat on our armor and shaft struck steel. Volner fell in that fray. He was greatest of kings. On the dead by the shore were the wolves were fed. We struck with our swords, the strife was far done, before Frey fell on the Flemish plain. The blue steel sword struck a mighty blow on the gilded armor that Hogni wore. Many maidens wept, but the wolves were fain. We struck with our swords, in hundreds I saw where the ships of the foe by angle ness lay. Six days we sailed to the fight ere they fell. We raised our spears with the sun rising. Valthoff was slain by our swords in that fray. We struck with our swords. By Bardfirth's side, blood gripped from our blades and the hawks were gorged. The bowstring sang when the arrows were sped. The poison steel gave many a wound. Loud beat the battle axe. Svelnir had forged. We struck with our swords in the game of war. We lifted our shields by Hedninga Bay. There might men see how we sundered steel and smote on their helms. It was other cheer than when in the arms of our brides we lay. We struck with our swords in North Northumberland. Upon our shields fell a hard cold rain. When morning had come, there was no need to urge our men to the bitter strife. The earth was covered with those who were slain. We struck with our swords in the southern isles. Hrthjof, our fight was lost. There Ragenfeld fell when the battle was high. That was bitterest blow to the men of his band. In the combat, many a dart was tossed. We struck with our swords. The dead lay in heaps and the wolves rejoiced. In the battle oar, Marstein, who ruled the Irish realm, my Vedder who poured, gave them rich repast. The ravens received their meed of war. We struck with our swords. Many men I saw who fell in the morning by strife for done. My son dropped down with a blade in his heart my stout-hearted hero, my eagle slain. Spears crashed on Birnies, the banners shone. We struck with our swords, by warriors true, good flesh was cut and two wolves was given. On Vixied, where ships were reddened with blood, there was no banquet with maids and wine. In the battle, many a war sark was riven. We struck with our swords against three kings, we fought at dawn by Lindisor. Few were the men that there escaped. They were rent asunder by hawks and wolves. In the sea fell floods of Irish gore. We struck with our swords. I saw fair lads. The friends of women give way, afraid. It was little we had when King Orn fell. Of the cheer of the bath by women prepared or stealing a kiss from a youthful maid. We struck with our swords. Brands bit on shields, the gilded darts struck on the weeds of war. For a long time hence, men will see and know how the princes gave battle by Anglesey. The arrows were dyed by the banks of ore. We struck with our swords. Is a man more doomed, though he's left in the face of a storm of spears? He who never has fought may bewail lost life. It is ill to urge cowards to eager strife. Little good from his heart has the man who fears. We struck with our swords. It is meet and just that man should face man where dawn swords sing. No thane should flinch back from his fellow thane. The bold man ever has heartily fought, and the lover of maids loves the battle den. 
we struck with our swords. It is wise to yield to the word of the fates. None escape their decrees. Yet I little thought Ella would be my bane when I fed the hawks and pastured the wolves. I drove my ships through the Scottish seas. We struck with our swords. I am glad to know that in Odin's hall the benches are laid. We shall soon drink our ale from the deer's horn there. The bold man never shrinks back from death. I shall not go in like a man afraid. We struck with our swords, now Oslog's sons would hasten to combat with steel-tipped darts. If they knew that I lay in this utter need, and that vast venomous worms were fierce at my flesh, from their mother and me they have won stout hearts. We struck with our swords, my life is near done, the adder at my heart gives me bitter pains. May the sharp sword likewise reach Ella's breast, for these tidings will rouse the wrath of my sons. They will not sit still, my hearty swains. We struck with our swords fifty times and won. In battle the ranks of the foe I flayed, but little thought that another king would overmaster me at the end. The gods give me welcome, I die unafraid. I am ready to go. Odin's maids have come to call me home, to his hall on high. With the gods I shall merrily drink my ale. My days are done, and laughing I die. Thank you.